Hello everyone. Today, I am going to showcase how enterprises can leverage on Azure OpenAI and Neo4j to extract insights from unstructured data in the form of text, video transcripts and so on. So in this demo, I am going to consider a hypothetical hospital example that has a large number of case history of various patients and I'm going to leverage on Azure OpenAI and Neo4j to extract information from those case history, feed it into Neo4j and then consume them again using Azure OpenAI. So this is the reference architecture that has been coming up again and again with our enterprise customers. Well, it is easier to extract information from a structured data and then feed it inside Neo4j. It, it usually is a not a straightforward process with unstructured data in the form of text, video transcripts, and so on. But with the help of OpenAI, it is very easy nowadays to extract the entities and relationships from this unstructured data and then feed it into Neo4j. The value of having Neo4j in the middle is that you will be able to connect your unstructured data, which, uh, which used to sit in silos traditionally. And using Neo4j, you can connect them together. And then as I'm going to showcase in, the, in my demo, you can gain tremendous insight from it. Again, on the consumption side, if you want to make it easier for your users to consume via a chatbot, you can build, it, build one using OpenAI and Neo4j. That way, you'll be able to control who can access what part of your data, as well as you can bring down the hallucination issues that you have been facing with the chatbot so far. Without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into the demo. So the demo takes an input in the form of a medical transcripts. A typical medical transcripts looks like this. It is very unstructured, consisting of uh, uh, the case history of a patient, uh, the diagnosis uh, they have been gone through, and all the, the symptoms there so far, and then uh, any DC, any history of diseases that the pers person has uh, gone through. So the demo application architecture looks like this. So we are going to feed a, a corpus of text uh, to Azure OpenAI uh, that is running within uh, Azure, uh, Azure. And Azure ML has a notebook that uh, automates the whole process of converting this uh, text corpus into a structured format uh, that uh, uh, th that is then fed into the Neo4j database. So once we have uh, the structured data converted inside uh, the Neo4j database, we can we are ready to consume, and we are going to consume using an application built on Streamlit and, and Langchain, so that any user can uh, go ahead and then interact with the Neo4j database straight away. So in the, the in the data ingestion part, the input transcript is actually converted into a schema like this. You can go with a generic schema, but in this demo, I chose to do with a, a domain specific schema like this because uh, the audience uh, for my application is going to be uh, domain specific uh, uh, do domain experts. So as you see here, uh, we are going to extract uh, the case. The case node denotes the case uh, uh, node that has been fed to. And then the person who is uh, for whom the case history is about the diagnosis mentioned in the case, the symptoms that is extracted uh, in the case information, as well as the affected body parts, the disease that the person has, and any uh, biological um, information that, that is showed in the diagnosis diagnostics. So we are going to extract this, uh, this information, this schema from the case history, and we are going to store the schema inside Neo4j database. So once you have the Neo4j database set up, with all the case history converted into uh, the schema that I just showed you earlier, we are ready to consume. So on the consumption part, if you are building a chatbot, then uh, the user can ask a question in a natural language. The language can be uh, English or any language that the LLM is aware of. Since large language models are trained with uh, multiple uh, languages, uh, the user will be able to interact with uh, with most most long, most popular languages. So in this case, I'm going to use English. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to use Langchain, which is going to convert that uh, English language in question that I'm asking into Cypher. 
and then the cipher is executed inside Neo4j database. So the data doesn't sit with Lang with with the LLM. Instead, the data sits uh, inside the Neo4j database, and I'm going to ask the question to this uh, database in in the form of cipher. So once I get the results from the Neo4j database, I'm going to summarize the results because the results will be in JSON. I'm going to make it easier for the user to understand so that uh, so I'm going to summarize the result and then return it back to the user. So this is how the chatbot uh, flow goes through. So let me quickly go through uh, how the chatbot looks like. So you can you, you can build a, a chatbot like this and then so uh, any any uh, a domain expert can come use this uh, chatbot to leverage on uh, the insights that they want to find out. So, you, say here I'm going to ask the chatbot about uh, which are all the which body parts got affected in most of my patients. So, if I, unless I have a connected information of uh, all my case history, I will not be able to uh, get my get this particular insight. So, as you see here, most of my patients are uh, have some dying, some uh, diseases that affects heart. So in this case, I have uh, close to 144 patients uh, who are affected. So while chatbot is, uh, is a pretty uh, user-friendly uh, interface for, uh, for users to interact with, for any kind of questions that they want to ask, uh, you can also build dashboards that give a tremendous amount of insights like this one. So in this case, I have, uh, I extracted close to 197 cases, case history and uh, that belongs to 197 different patients. So based on the case history, uh, 421 diseases were identified and 125 body parts were affected uh, 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 in these uh, case histories. So you can uh, quickly build out um, a Sankey chart uh, like this that, that, that shows a lot more information. So in this case, the, the chart that you see here is uh, very simple, it just connects uh, the disease, the affected body part, and then uh, the patient who is affected. So the green nodes are uh, are uh, the body part, the blue ones are the diseases, and then the orange nodes are the patients. So as you see here, if, if I take chest, there are a lot more diseases that affect predominantly chest. And then I see so many uh, patients who are uh, uh, who are affected by these diseases? Uh, there is one patient who is affected with both uh, cell carcinoma and then adenocarcinoma. So uh, that affects uh, both one one of them affects pancreas and one of them affects uh, chest. I see an end to end relationships only by connecting the uh, data which used to sit in silos uh, in the form of case history, just as unstructured text data. Right away, I connected them and, I, and then I'm, I'm able to get, gain some insight out of it. So uh, you, 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 do, you do not want to stop here. Uh, you might even need to go uh, further deeper to find out more information. So uh, in this case, I'm going to find out uh, what are all the top symptoms my uh, patient uh, uh, my, my patient get affected. So if it is a, a season of a flu or something, I can uh, I, I quickly know that, okay, uh, most of my patients are affected by some, some uh, have a lot more symptoms. So it, it has to do something with this, this disease. So I get immediately get to know that. And then I also get to know about uh, the diagnosis information and then the top diseases that my uh, patients get affected. Okay, so this this dashboard is pretty pretty simple, but you do not want to stop here. You might need to even uh, dig further more. So since we already have everything inside Neo4j database and then connected together, you are you have, uh, you have a capability of applying a data science algorithms on top of it. So in this case, I'm using Bloom, which is Neo4j's uh, data visualization tool. Um, you don't need to be a data scientist to use this tool. Uh, the algorithm that I'm going to apply is it's called PageRank Centrality. I'm uh, going to apply on top of the diseases and then the affected body parts that I have uh, today, uh, and then find out which are, which are all the most influential uh, nodes that I have. So uh, once, I, once I run the algorithm here, I get to know that, okay, there are certain, uh, th especially this body part, chest, it has a high centrality score of 50. So that means a lot more uh, diseases and then symptoms are 
uh, are focused on this particular uh, node. Uh, and then similarly, you have uh, you, you have a lot more algorithms to apply and then gain uh, insights which are usually uh, hidden out of plain sight. Uh, so Neo4j Graph Data Science supports close to 70 plus algorithms today and then uh, you can leverage on uh, these Graph Data Science algorithm and then do in-graph machine learning within the Neo4j database itself.